Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video this morning. I hope you're doing really great and so we're going to be taking a look at what is going on out there. So that new disturbance is now given a high chance to develop and it looks as though it is going to be taking aim at Florida. So we'll be looking at the conditions out ahead of it in terms of intensification. And we're also going to be looking at the other systems out there. We've got Tropical Storm Franklin which is expected to strengthen into a hurricane and we we have the remnants of GER likely bringing rainfall to some areas such as Barbados and uh, two more disturbances out there. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. So let us go ahead and return to the satellite imagery and uh, there we have our different areas that I want to focus on. So we have that Caribbean system yet to be designated as an invest but it should become invest 93L. We've got Franklin up there still asymmetrical as uh, the western side of the system is not producing much activity but eventually it will be moving into more conducive conditions that will allow for some gradual strengthening and it will also have a better satellite appearance. We've got the of GERD, uh, that low pressure area that is now bringing rainfall, maybe even thunderstorms to Barbados. And we've got the remnants of Emily losing that chance to potentially re-intensify and uh, 92L is also out there. And so let's go on to the latest outlook map. Here we have them being marked with the exception of the remnants of GERD. So redevelopment is not expected of it, but uh, I wanted to focus on it briefly because of the activity that it is produced. So it's just loitering around there and so there we have our Caribbean system it should gradually get itself together and conditions are very favorable right now for it to do so we'll be going on to them very soon and uh, that disturbance they're given the 40% chance to develop 92L and then the remnants of Emily uh, and as, as I said losing the chance to redevelop now as we look at the satellite imagery of the Caribbean let's zoom in here we can see that nothing is organized right now over in the northwestern Caribbean however conditions are conducive and I'm expecting that throughout the day we're gonna be seeing some sort of improvement in regards to the disturbance but there could be periods of very heavy rainfall across parts of Central America so that flood threat is going to be increasing for some spots and we'll go on to the rainfall map very soon as we look over into the vicinity of Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands there we have some of that activity moving down uh, coming from Franklin so that is helping to induce maybe a some showers and thunderstorms at times let me know what's been happening for you guys down in puerto rico and the virgin islands but there we see that most of the activity in association with franklin remains to the north of the area and there's that outflow as well likely bringing some overcast conditions to parts of the leeward islands and there we have the abc islands much not going on this morning let's drift a bit more uh, to the east and then here we can see those remnants of gert so as i said it is producing some activity resulting in a bit of rainfall for uh, Barbados, maybe some thunderstorms as well. Okay, let me know exactly what conditions have been like for you. And now we're going on to the Caribbean system. We're going to be looking at this one in details because there is a chance that it could become our next tropical storm very soon and potentially even a hurricane. So uh, the model guidance is not available as I said earlier, it is not yet designated as an invest although I'm expecting that very soon. So we see that there's a 70% chance that we could see development take place over the next 7 days and so this is going to be making its way up to the north northwest and eventually move in on a northward track and then turn into the northeast. East. And so models have been showing that Florida could face landfall of whatever this system becomes, whether it becomes a tropical storm or a hurricane. Florida could be the state that has to deal with the impacts uh, or the worst of the impacts rather from the system and even go into uh, parts of the Yucatan, Mexico and also over into parts of western Cuba. You want to keep watch because there could be a lot of rainfall as we head into the weekend and even in the Cayman Islands as well there could be some substantial rainfall activity now as we look at the conditions out ahead of the system let's go ahead and kickstart things looking at the wind shear map and this might be a little bit confusing but we have the white outline of the different land areas and based on the color of the land we can tell whether it is uh, the, those upper level winds are conducive or not so green means that yes they are not too strong and they won't interfere much with our development 
developing system so that is a favorable environment in terms of the share and then yellow means neutral meanwhile red means unfavorable that is when upper level winds are strong and they kind of help to uh, limit intensification of the systems so we can see that the disturbance is in an area of generally conducive wind shear and there we can see franklin as well so if we look closely we would observe that there are a lot of those red lines in the area indicating those strong upper level winds and they're coming in from the west from the opposite direction so that is why we see uh basically all of the activity in association with franklin to the east of its center because those uh, strong upper level winds are just uh, helping to displace the activity but uh, we're going to be looking at the cone forecast for Franklin very shortly as we head to the sea surface temperatures oh my gosh it's so hot right now across many areas parts of the northern Caribbean and especially the Gulf of Mexico 30 31 even some spots having 32 degrees Celsius in the Gulf and then in terms of the dry air we don't see much dry air in the air so it is in a very conducive environment to start getting itself together let's see how it takes advantage of such conditions as we head throughout today but then uh, that leaves me with two potential things that could be inhibiting factors one the land interaction and also the fact that the system is not expected to be a slow mover but uh, the system is expected to remain mostly over water uh, make its way through the Yucatan Channel into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then uh, if it is a fast moving system it won't really have that time to really settle down and get those thunderstorms rotating and intensifying and that can actually cause internal shearing of the system so let's see how it holds out for the next couple of days but I still believe that this is going to become our next tropical storm potentially a hurricane and of course the next name is Italia and so guys now we want to go ahead and move on to uh, the rainfall forecast for the Caribbean after which we will be taking a look at Franklin and concluding this update and so we can see here that this map becomes pretty colorful up there in the vicinity of Franklin so Franklin is producing a lot of heavy rainfall but that is offshore right now not affecting anywhere uh, those highest totals that we see but uh, some of that additional rainfall is possible in Puerto Rico and then there's a lot of moisture in the area going from Hispaniola all the way around to Central America we've got that disturbance in the area so uh, there's lots of moisture helping to enhance all these shower and thunderstorm activity as such are the different islands jamaica cuba the cayman islands and even going to central america the mainland territories mexico belize the bay islands and uh, ambergris key could experience some heavy rainfall as well going to guatemala el salvador honduras nicaragua even sections of costa rica and panama and then down in northern south america that daytime heating could help to enhance some thunderstorms across parts of colombia and venezuela things should be pretty much drier in the Guyanas as we head to Barbados as we saw earlier there's some of that activity in association with that low pressure area so uh, the possibilities there for some more rainfall as we head through today but for the rest of the islands much is not anticipated and finally we're taking a look at the cone forecast for Franklin so as I mentioned earlier as we saw the system is being sheared and that shaded area right there is actually representing the extent of the tropical storm uh, force wind field so we can see that most of that is to the east of its center as I said it's being sheared off we're not seeing much going on over the western side of the system and as a result it is not likely to become a hurricane just yet maybe for another day or so but by Sunday morning it could intensify into a hurricane when conditions become more conducive and could gradually strengthen maybe up to a category 2 at the peak wouldn't be surprised if it actually makes it to major hurricane status but we also see that it is going to be moving very quickly look at that distance between 2 a.m. on Monday and Tuesday compared to Tuesday and Wednesday seemingly double the distance so it is going to be moving quickly up to the north as well likely to pass well to the west of Bermuda but if it manages to be close enough to the point where tropical storm force winds or conditions could be experienced then a watch could be issued so you want to keep watch if you're in Bermuda and then down the road other areas such as Atlantic Canada might be impacted by this and so I will continue to keep giving the necessary updates on Franklin as time goes by and that is pretty much it for this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments I'll respond to you once I get the chance to and as always remember to boil the watch.